Shawnee. Everton are back with a bang. The Premier League season has kicked off and Everton have just been beaten 3 0 home by Brighton and Hove Albion. What turned out to be a shambolic display, really, from Everton in the end. Uh, the team announced was pretty much we knew what was what it was gonna be. It was what we've been saying all week on Toffee TV. Michael Keane was always starting instead of Jake O'Brien, um, the manager. He gives you he, he gives you the you know, what he's going to do with the Premier League experience chat, which I personally find nonsense when he says it. I think it's a joke, but hey-ho, uh, a lot of people are happy with that. Michael Keane was in. Um, everything else was as we thought it would be. We knew there'd be no star for Elliman and Dye or Jesper Linsom. And that's just the way it is. Uh, Brighton were displaying people with zero Premier League experience, including their 31-year-old manager, Fabian Herzler. And to be honest, I thought Everton started the game much the better side. Had a goal disallowed after five minutes, a corner, which Harrison was offside, but he put it in. Uh, Harrison had already made... Uh, Steele make a good save, cutting in on his left foot, keeper made a good save. And Everton were much the better side, I think. Brighton, I know how good Brighton can be. They are a good footballing side and they'll get better. But today, I thought they were poor today until they went to 10 men. Then they showed the quality of keeping the ball and they, they got three and they could have ended up with five. Um, but up until that, they weren't at the best today. And they, a better team than us with faster forward plays would have took the ball off them many times in that first half. There were so many risky ways to play out. Everton just, it was slow and ponderous at times. Other times some nice link up, but it just seemed that our tactic was, and our only tactic was smash it over the left back and hope Jack Harrison could get on the end of it and, Sometimes it worked and then the final ball was really poor. Other times it didn't get there and you're susceptible then. And Brighton obviously playing with a new system. They're always going to carry a threat with Matoma and Jan Kuba Mintet. And it was Mintet with zero Premier League experience. That uh, that went beyond Michalenko, crossed it and Matoma tapped it in at the far post. I thought it was poor defending from Michalenko, really poor. He got done too easily instead of getting his body across from Minter just took him inside left him for dead uh, put the ball across I don't know who was marking Matoma certainly not Ashley Young who was nowhere to be seen uh, Tarkovsky maybe should have had an, an eye on who was behind him and Matoma's got a tap in and that was Brighton second attack I think Joe Pedro did a good shot which hit the outside of the post and came out other than that it was sporadic from them they had a lot of the ball that you'd expect at a good football inside but they were ahead without really without really doing anything. Everton sort of got back on top again. Um, but it was, I think from Brighton's perspective, I don't think there was too many moments they'd have been worried about once they'd gone 1-0 up. Uh, Everton still keeping that, haven't won a Premier League game at Goodison Park when the opposition has scored since we beat Crystal Palace to stay up. And that continued today. Obviously, it was always going to be difficult once they got ahead. Adrissa Garner Gay smashed one over the bar and Tim Iraboonham, who I thought was excellent, uh, bent one right off the far post. Tarkovsky headed the free kick over. And it was that kind of thing. We got in at half-time. Had the lie of the not been in the game. Don't think Dominic Calvert-Lewin had done much either. And I was hoping the manager would mix it up a little bit. Maybe make a half-time change and bring and die on for the Corey who wasn't having a good game, but he didn't. He left it as it was. And we come out for the second half, and there was a, you know, we we decided to press them a little bit quicker, and by forcing them into an error, they gave the ball away. Um, it, to Iribun and poked it out to Harrison. He played a good ball into Dominic Calvert-Lewin. We had the core with him. Lewis Dunk took Calvert-Lewin down, or so the referee thought. Uh, he gave Everton a penalty, which was then overturned by VAR. 
uh, just as the goal had been overturned by VAR. Now, there's conflicting reports. I don't know if this is real. But Simon Hooper come over, the VAR, their screens below me in the upper bullens, and he was looking at it and shaking his head first and looking. Now, people have said the VAR screen wasn't working. Now, for full disclosure, I don't know if that's real or not. If it isn't, if it wasn't working and that's accurate, then it's a disgrace that he's, get, he's disallowed the penalty. I've seen it again. I've just watched it again. Calvert-Lewin's foot goes with dunks and it slides away and takes him out. West Ham, as at the time of recording, West Ham have just been given what I would say is a soft penalty. Then they didn't change the decision, the on-field decision. I don't think there was a clear and obvious error by Simon Hooper. Therefore, I think you could argue it was a penalty. The penalty should have stood. It didn't stand anyway. Um, and Brighton was still 1-0. And Everton, a couple of times, had the opportunity, breaking quickly, had the opportunity to get balls in. And But there was, there's no... I've said this before. And people can read into it what they want or come up with their own thing. But there's no way of playing. we just done the same thing time and time again today, which was give it to Keane or Tarkovsky and they smashed it over the full-back. There's a, there's a hint of what it might have been, the left-back. Who, uh, who didn't have a great game. And yet, there was nothing coming from it. We whack it over a full-back's head to a left-footed right winger who has to check back inside anyway. It's just not, for me, it's not good enough. Seven weeks of pre-season and that was the game plan. That's not good enough for me. We have to be better than that. Brighton got the second goal with Jessica Garnett Gay, giving the ball away. We backed off. No one really come to Danny Welbeck and closed them down and he just steered the ball beyond Jordan Pickford to give Brighton a two-goal lead. And then not long after that, Ashley Young, who... I got, one of my fears all week was, and I said this a few times, and I've said it throughout pre-season, because I, I think this, this is where I will criticise the manager and the coaching staff. A, how they've handled Beto this pre-season. Why Dominic Calvert-Lewin's been given all the minutes, I don't know. And last week against Roma, when we lost Seamus Coleman, the manager went with Ashley Young instead of Roman Dixon. Now, Roman Dixon... Should have been given and Coleman went off after what 25 minutes last week. That should have been Roman Dixon's game in front of 30,000 at Goodison. Can you handle it to be on the bench maybe today? I know we played last night for the for the 21s and scored actually, but he should have been on the bench. And poor planning by the manager, poor decision last week, poor today. Ashley Young in the side, Ashley Young should have just headed it away, tries to be clever, brings it down as a Matoma, I think, takes it off him and he drags him down and it's a red card. And he's now suspended for the trip to Tottenham. Seamus won't be back, I don't think. So, therefore, it'll be Mason Holgate at right-back, maybe, next week, because James Garner won't be there. He certainly... I'd be amazed if Roman Dixon comes in, put it that way. But wouldn't it have been nice to have him there, have him on the bench, give him some Premier League minutes? But, hey-ho, it didn't happen. Once it went 2-0, Brighton took over. That's when I think Brighton stepped it up a little bit. They're a good side to keeping the ball. We couldn't get near them, really, after that. Uh, they made it 3-0. Again, too easy. And they just waltzed through and a drinker just cut across and, and placed it past Pickford for 3-0. They then had a goal disallowed for 4-0. And Everton didn't lay a glove on it. Sean Dyche, the substitution, once we went down to 10, then they sort of didn't know what they were doing, it looked like, because Dwight McNeil went to right-back. And Jack Harrison and Garner and Nira Boonham were looking round as if to say, where am I playing? No one, and I don't like that. I think that's really poor when players haven't got a clue. A lot of clubs, when the passing instructions bring a piece of paper on, like a post it note, Michael Keane carried an, basically an A4 envelope on with, in, with instructions <laughs> to give to Tarkovsky, which was a bit mad. It, it's, I, I'm laughing because I could sit here and be really, really angry, and there'll be, there was times in the game when I was angry, particularly with the lack of running, the lack of effort from the front two today. Uh, at times, I didn't think they, they covered themselves in glory. Beto was given 15 minutes and done knocked people about and at least had a bit of an appetite for it. Uh, I think Everton have got a problem. I think they need to make a decision with Calvert-Lewin. If he ain't signing, don't, then don't play him. Don't play him because we've got to force this issue. We need attacking players. We've said that. Um, I don't get Jake O'Brien signing. If there's no money, I don't get why we've bought a player that the manager would rather play Michael Keane, who didn't train all week, instead of a 16, 17 million pound player who's just coming. We may as well, you, I'm not saying he shouldn't have signed Jacob Brown, but what I'm saying is, 
maybe that money should have been used in an attacking sense first to get a quick right winger, which what Everton have wanted all summer. But it is what it is. Uh, I thought the bright the man of the match for me was Tim Edabunum. Uh he I thought he had a really good hour. He, he did drop off. I can't deny that he dropped off later on. Some, you know, went down to the level of a lot of other players, but he was head and shoulders above anybody else in an Everton shirt today. Really poor the way it is. It was. A, I knew it was a tough game. It was a game I still feel like Everton could have won, particularly early on. I felt I felt as though we, you know, we we could have gone on top. Thought we were the better side. They definitely finished comfortably. They're a good side. I know they are and they'll get better. And like I said, once it went 2-0, it was they were comfortable. It was easy for them. Um, but they were 2-0 up. And I think even they will have been a bit like, you know, we're a, we're a bit fortunate to be 2 up here really without playing great. But after that, they did. Um, for us, we don't have, like what Brighton have got, two quick uh, wingers. and Well, three, because a drinker came on. You've got a goal threat. Our wingers haven't got a goal threat. Dwight McNeil didn't have a good game today, but doesn't get a lot of goals. Jack Harrison worked his socks off, but doesn't get a lot of goals. That's the problem. Milliman and Dye came on for his debut. Jesper Lindstrom, Lindstrom didn't even get on the pitch. So, first for thought, I think the uh, the recruitment team, I um, think Kevin Thelwell, got to have a long, hard think about this and see where they can get some funds from because um, they need attacking options and they need them now as well as another centre midfield player. So, there you go. One of those days. I've seen it all before. It's been too many times in the last few years. Um, Goodison's last season needs to be better than it was today. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Everton are back. Don't you just love it? See you later.